Hello watch enthusiasts. Now today I'm going to talk about my favourite designs of watches. And these can be modern or vintage, but these are, these are generally watches which have been around for a long time, and are tried and tested designs which I just find absolutely beautiful. However, before that I'd like to uh, address something which has, um, has been brought to my attention by Bezelos. Now I've been nominated as, um, or for um, Newcomer of the Year on the, uh, the watch scene. Um, and this is something which I, I'm very flattered um, to be nominated for. Um, and, uh, and for this, I would like to encourage you, um, if, if possible, to, uh, to vote for me if you think that I'm, I'm worthy of this award. Um, so I'll include the, the link in the description, but I, I would thank you for any, um, any support on this um, that I can get. Now, the first design which I'd like to talk about is the Cartier Tank. And this is an interesting watch introduced in 1917, so it's a very long, uh, long-standing design, and we're coming up to its 100th anniversary this, um, well, this coming year. And it's a beautiful design, in my opinion, because it, it combines such simplicity with the complexity of that classic Cartier design. So the dial, with those Roman numerals, is very complex, but the rest of the watch is very simple and, um, and minimalistic in its beauty. Those blued hands are also a wonderful touch along that rectangular second um, or minute, minute track. My personal favourite design for this watch is the standard, um, the standard tank or the Louis, Louis Cartier version. And these are the very simple versions with this particular dial design and, uh, and case design, which leads, leads to a very simple um, design and very simple shape, that simple rectangular shape with those integrated um, those lugs which follow the lines of the case. Um, feeding onto those uh, those lovely leather straps made by Cartier. Now, of course, more complex versions of this watch are available, but I think I love the simplicity of this uh, this design and this particular version of the watch because I think it harks back to that original 1917 design, and uh, and for me, having a real heritage behind a watch is a real plus point. The dial finishing is also something which I love because on many watches one sees matte dials, but on the um, the Cartier Tank. One often sees these porcelain-style, extremely shiny dials um, that look like porcelain. They look like pl like like plates, if you will, um, with that painting uh, printed onto the top. And I just think this this gives a very simple design, but while giving it a complexity which draws the eye to the dial. And even though the hands are short, one can quickly read the time. I would also argue that, uh, despite some people arguing that the Jaeger Le Coutre is the iconic um, squared-off dress watch. I would argue that the tank is, simply because it preceded the um, the Jaeger Le Coutre, and also because it has a more simple design, um, which is very, very recognisable. Now, both manual, automatic and quartz versions of this watch have been made. And actually, with the tank, I personally think that actually it doesn't make too much of a difference um, with regards to the, the, the prestige of the watch. Now, some people will find this shocking, I think, that I, I think that the quartz is just as, um, as appealing as the other versions. But I think because it's a dress watch without a second hand, to the majority of people, it actually won't make a difference seeing that tick as opposed to the, um, the sweep of a, a mechanical movement. Now, of course, I will choose a mechanical movement over a quartz, but I think in the tank it's not the be-all and end-all, seeing as the, um, the, uh, the movement is still beautifully finished, even if it is quartz. Now, of course, the beauty of the quartz, though, is that um, one can get an absolute design classic at a fairly reasonable price um, of below £2,000, um, whereas an automatic version will take you up to six or £7,000, which is, of course, a lot of money, though I, w though I would say that these watches do, um, uh, do hold their value very well. Now, the second watch on this list is the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, and this is an absolute design classic. Um, in terms of design, this was a real first. It was the first luxury steel watch for a start. And also, that beautiful design has remained almost unchanged since 1972. And the story of this design is, it, most people don't know this, um, and I only found this out recently. But it's interesting, the, um, the, uh, the managing director of, um, of Audemars Piguet, Georges Goulet, um, in fact contacted Gerald Genta, who was the famous designer of this watch, on the eve of Baselworld, or at least the fair that became known as Baselworld, telling them that they were expecting a, um, in his words, an unprecedented steel watch, 
and in less than a day, Genta designed the uh, the Royal Oak, which is a really incredible testament to this watch and to Genta's um, extreme skill in designing wristwatches. Now this watch really speaks to me on the basis that it has such an individual design, such a different design from other watches. Um, I mean, there are effectively no other watches on the market that look look quite like a Royal Oak. Obviously, watches re designed by Genta um, post Royal Oak, such as the uh, the um, Patek Philippe Nautilus, and uh, and equally some um, some IWCs, um, have taken a similar look, but none have ever looked quite like the Royal Oak and. Um, and it really is a testament that it hasn't changed in all this time. Now, equally, the symbolism of this design is very interesting to me as well. So, for example, the um, the octagonal shape of the um, of the bezel is in fact a tribute to the shape of the portholes on the Royal Oak battleship um, run by the British Navy in the um, in the First and Second World Wars. Uh, of course, that's talking about the uh, the tree, the Royal Oak, the tree in which the king hid. Um, but that's a completely other story, a completely different story. That tapestry dial design is also a beautiful feature, um, with that uh, that woven um, design along that um, that squared off dial, um, which I personally find extremely attractive and uh, uh, and differentiates this watch from other other versions and uh, and models. Of course, me liking this watch is also helped by the beauty of the in-house movement that comes in this watch and the attention to detail in its production. Now, another beautiful design is the super compressor diver. And here I speak generally of the super compressor as a general type of watch. And this is of course a watch which has a, a crown which tightens under pressure. Now, despite what most people often think as a, a diver having two crowns being a, a super compressor, this isn't always the case. Um, a super compressor simply means that the crowns have a crowns and case back. Um, have a special system which means that they compress under under water pressure, thus making them more water resistant the deeper you go. Now, these were used often on internal bezel watches with two crowns, um, but my favourite must be the Jaeger Le Coutre um, Memovox um, dive watch with the alarm as you see in the middle on that ring, um, which could be adjusted using one of the crowns. Now the reason why I find this design so attractive is that it, it incorporates all the elements of a dive watch while retaining that elegance of a watch without an external bezel. And I, I find this design extremely nostalgic as well of that era of, um, of discovery in diving, and that, uh, that wonderful era when, uh, when divers would go down in, um, in those big um, bronze dive suits. Um, and uh, though, of course, I wasn't alive in those times, I, I feel that it's, uh, it's an incredible time to, um, to think about. Now, of course, Memovoxes these days are um, are uh, Jeglukhut uh, watches with external bezels as well. And I'm not too keen on these. I find that it detracts from the beauty of the watch, um, which is a shame because I, I like the internal bezel of the original. This is why these days my super compressor of choice is the Longines Legend Diver. And this is a watch which incorporates all the, uh, the wonderful features of the original, um, of the original line of, um, of divers. Admittedly, this doesn't have the functionality of a modern dive watch. For example, there isn't loom on the second hand, and um, loom is generally quite poor on this watch. Equally, the fully polished case will get scratched very easily, um, and this is always a problem with fully polished cases. One has to accept that they will get scratched heavily. Um, and I think owning this watch, that would bother me, but it doesn't detract from the fact that I think this design is absolutely wonderful. And, uh, it, and really does offer a, a nostalgia and, uh, and lost beauty which, which one doesn't see in modern watches. The next watch which I think has a wonderful design and a timeless design is the Panerai Luminor. Now originally conceived for the, um, the uh, Marina Militare, so the, uh, the Italian Navy, these watches were worn as dive watches for their military divers um, in the 1950s. The most iconic design feature of this watch is that crown guard with the lever which releases the crown. Now this is a real icon, really, in terms of Italian-designed watches. The simplicity of this watch is wonderful, but incorporated with that that wonderful um, tool aspect of this watch, as it was a real tool for divers. Another thing I like about this watch is the dial. Now they make two versions of the dial, the sausage dial and the sandwich dial. My personal preference is the sandwich, and this is where a, um, a loomed plate is placed beneath the dial, which has cutouts where the markers are, 
giving extra depth and, uh, and perspective to the dial. Those very large domed crystals are also very beautiful on these watches and lend to a very old-fashioned look, um, which is again something which I like. And one doesn't see very many of these watches simply because they're, they are, they're large and um, not particularly fashionable for, for many. Um, and a lot of people won't have heard of Panerai, where they will have heard of Rolex. But that sort of um, uh, lack of, um, of, of, uh, of publicity appeals to me greatly. The squared off angular, angular design of these watches is also very unique in the, uh, in the watch industry. Um, and that cushion style of case also makes them very comfortable despite, despite being very, very large, which is a, um, a very attractive and helpful feature considering the weight and size of these watches. Finally, as far as external bezel dive watches go, I think the Blancpain 50 Fathoms is the most elegant and the most beautiful in my opinion. Now this is the, the, the first dive watch. It came out a year before the Rolex Submariner and Omega Seamasters, uh, making it the first with the external rotating bezel, um, and was made to military specifications. Now I, I personally think this is a beautiful watch because of its simplicity. Now whether you look at the older versions which had this very spartan, very um, austere dial, with the bare necessities being the, um, uh, the hour markers at 12, 3, 6 and 9, and equally a bezel giving you simple um, markers as to where, um, where the start was, and then graduated every 15 minutes. I do also believe that more modern iterations, such as the, uh, the new 50 Fathoms, are also just as attractive. Now these are more ornate, these are more ornate dive watches, and appeal to more of a luxury audience than a tool audience, but still retain that very elegant quality that the original had, and a very different look to all other dive watches. One beautiful feature of the modern watch is that lovely um, curved um, sapphire bezel. Now these are very difficult to make, hence the price of them, um, but give an extremely different and original design, um, and lend to a softer, more vintage look. I'm equally impressed by the Bathyscaphe, which is the, um, the, the more modern, um, slightly less ornate version of the 50 Fathoms, which is more of a sports watch than a, an ornate diver. And this, it combines a, well, the original design cues, so no crown guards, for example, with a more modern aesthetic, with that beautiful sunburst dial and, uh, and more sharp lines. Though this watch may not have the following that the Rolex Submariner or Omega Seamasters have, I think this watch is a really beautiful choice, and a very interesting choice if someone buys one, because it really is a, a talking piece, um, because it has very different looks to another um, dive watch, and is the sort of watch which is bought not because of brands like a Rolex or an Omega, but rather because someone is very interested in the, uh, the history of the watch. In my opinion, the most elegant recent 50 Fathoms is the Tribute to 50 Fathoms version, which has a more simple bezel design while still retaining that sapphire insert. It also has a more simple dial design, going back to the more austere lines of the original, but still retaining the date at 4.30. This watch also has Aqualung printed on the dial, which is again a reference to Jacques Cousteau's invention um, of the, the Aqualung, which was of course um, uh, an incredible piece of technology used by divers for, uh, for breathing. Uh, breathing apparatus beneath uh, beneath the sea, and of course uh, ha has a um, a great history with the Fifty Fathoms, as this was worn by Jacques Cousteau. Anyway, that was my list of the watches which I think are the most elegant ever made, um, and this is just my opinion, obviously, um, but uh, they definitely are beautiful watches, and uh, and I'll be curious to hear your your opinions in the uh, in the comments down below. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please do like, share, and subscribe. But anyway, this is Arm on the Watch Guy, over and out.